Welcome back. We are here on eToro. This is going to be my daily forecast for next Monday, October 26, 2020. If you'd like to support this channel, you're welcome to uh, hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. So, as always, we'll start off by looking at the US dollar index and see what basically happened this week. So the US dollar index depreciated significantly in the beginning of the week. We did appreciate a little bit. We tried to reach the 50 moving average, but we basically broke down again on uh, in the day session on Friday. And uh, at this point, I do believe that we are going to go lower. Uh, if we were to go higher, then of course we would most likely have tested the 50 moving average. But if you look at the technical indicators, they are very bearish at this point both the rsi the cci the stochastic is flat and the macd is pointed to lower levels so i do we may go towards the 50 moving average in the beginning of monday's session but after that i do believe that we break down i don't see um, this um going above the 50 moving average and trending up from here we'll mostly go a little bit up towards the 50 moving average and then fall. And then if we break the lows of uh, Wednesday, then we'll go significantly lower in this market. And that means that we most likely will see a commodities rise in the beginning of next week, if that is the case. If, this, if we have an appreciation and we rally above the 50 moving average and go above these highs, then we'll have uh, commodity prices fall uh, and also precious metals so just have that in mind so if you look at gold at oil first so oil has been sticking to the 50 moving average all week we were above here on monday rallied quite significantly on on tuesday session to 41.81 uh, dollars and uh, then we found resistant and then we fell back down. Of course, there's been a lot of speculation about the stimulus and so on. And, uh, and there, this is not really due, due to demand. It's more due to speculation on the stimulus bill and whether or not there's going to be any more stimulus before the election or after the election. So I am not a buyer in this market. I just don't see that the world economy is in a good shape at the moment and therefore um, demand for oil and other commodities in the long run will fall and go to lower levels, price levels. Uh, we have been sticking to the 50 moving average. We did break uh, below the 50 moving average on Wednesday and we uh, tried to rally again uh, yesterday, broke down. And today we tried to rally again, and and today we also broke down. We ended up at thirty nine point eighty three dollars, and we're trading at the moment under forty dollars. So at this point, I do believe that we may just stick around here for a while before the election and so on. If we have an appreciation of the U.S. dollar, then we may see this market rise on Monday. If that the U.S. dollar. Um, uh, now, if we have the appreciation of the U.S. dollar, then this market may fall significantly uh, on Monday session towards the 200 moving average. So we have been trading within a range of $43 and the lows of $30, $36. So we have been trading in this range for months at this, at this point. At some point, we are going to test the 200 moving average. We're also going to test these lows. And it's just a matter of time before these lows break and we go to uh, $35 and also maybe to $30. If you look at the technical indicators for, for oil, they are very bearish at this point. Both the MACD is about to cross the signal line. Stochastic is showing signs of, 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 uh, of bearish, uh, bearishness. We can say that um, pointing to lower levels. The same goes for the CCI and also the RSI. And the reason for that is that there's just not the demand for oil in this market. 
even though you had news coming out that Russia would basically uh, cut back on its uh, production and so on, you still not see it. You didn't see this market rise. Even though we get uh, additional stimulus bill, yeah, we probably go up to $43, but then we'll break back down again. And even though if you get higher than that, go to 50 then the fall will just be that more aggressive. This is just a sign that we have no idea where to go. And as the economy is as it is at the moment, it is most likely that we are going to lower levels. So we look at natural gas. So natural gas has finally pulled back a little bit. I do believe that natural gas will pull back even more than this. We'll probably see uh, one or two more uh, red candles towards the 50 moving average before we go higher. If you can, if you look at the technical indicators for natural gas, they have all turned around now. And the main reason why we were overextended, uh, we were not overbought, but we were overextended. And usually when that happens, is uh, you have a pullback towards the 50 moving average, and then you go higher from there. No interest in basically shorting these, uh, the uh, natural gas. And the reason why is that even though we expect a pullback towards the 50 minimum average, this is a market that can turn around in an instance. We may see a, a big green candlestick on Monday, um, even though we are very overstretched. So best tactics here is to wait in order for this market to fall towards the 50 moving average in order to enter a buy position. To buy here is quite risky because uh, it can fall, but it can also um, continue upwards. I do favor the downside at this point, but but it, this is not a market that you basically should, should short at this point, and definitely not at this time of the year. So... We ran into resistance here at 3.29, and uh, we see that this was previous resistance in the past. We may go to these highs of 3.426, uh, and that is the next the target before or the next resistance. But as these indicators are indicating, we are most likely going to have a little bit of pullback before we go higher. So if you look at copper, so copper did exactly what I expected it to do. There is no reason for this. Similar to, to oil, copper is very... Um, it it um, basically moves with the world economy. So if there's a lot of production in the world economy, then copper prices increase. And if um, there's still a production, then copper prices basically decline. That is the same for the most commodities, but especially for copper and also for, for oil, uh, mainly due to the fact that we use copper in everything. Most uh, everything that we basically, uh, all machines that we basically produce, we have copper, is, copper is part of that production. And at this point, because the world economy is slowing down, you should expect copper also to decline with it in time. Um, I did not expect copper to rally here. I did expect copper to basically fall towards the 200 moving average. But at this point, we are falling towards the 50 moving average. And uh, if you look at the technical indicators, they are all showing that we are about to turn around in this market quite significantly. MACD is not turned uh, completely yet, but the stochastic CCI and the RSI have. So the first resistance, uh, the support area will be here at the 3.05. Then it's going to be the 50 moving average. If that breaks, then we'll go and test these lows again. It may well be that we will start trading sideways. It may well be that we'll go towards the 50 moving average, up to these levels, back towards the 50 moving average, and so on. Because it looks like that the 50 moving average is about to... to uh, basically it doesn't look as bullish as it did only a few weeks ago when we had this bullish run here. It's about to turn around. That is what this is basically indicating. And that means that we'll most likely see um, 
significantly lower prices for copper. So if we go and look at gold, so gold tried to uh, rally uh, several times this week up towards the 50 moving average. We, well, technically tried, but it is just too much resistant above here. First of all, we have the 50 moving average, which is acting as significant resistance now. And even though if we broke the 50 moving average, we would have to go through this entire area that we tried to get through several months ago and we failed. At this point, I do believe that we'll go towards the 200 moving average, at least towards the um, 18, 1850 level first and then most likely to the 1800 level before we go higher. This is not a positive candlestick, to be fairly honest. If you look at technical indicators as well, they have all turned around, except for the RSI. CCI is looking very negative. Same goes as the Stochastic has turned around, and so has the MACD. And that means that we may see a quite aggressive fall towards the downside on Monday. And pay attention to the U.S. dollar index. It, if, if it appreciates on Monday and tries to break uh, or test the 50 moving average or break above the 50 moving average, you most likely see a complete collapse towards the first 1850 and then 1800 uh, in gold. But I am bullish on gold. There is um, going to be a lot of spending from governments in the, the coming years. Uh, printing presses, they are just going to explode because we have to get out of the, the, the basically economic problems that the coronavirus has created. And of course, that will be really bullish for gold. So if you look at silver, silver hasn't been as bullish this week as gold has been. We have tried to rally up towards the 50 moving average, but we never really got there. Now we're turning around and the technical indicators are also turning around. So we will most likely see lower levels on Monday and also next week. So we see that the RSI is basically flat, CCI is pointing to lower levels, the same goes for the stochastic and the MACD is about to turn around. There is very similar to gold. It's very similar to trade both of these things. They act in a similar fashion. We have the 50 moving average just above, which will be significant resistant. And even though that breaks, we have this entire area here that we have to get through. And I don't believe that's going to happen before we have a major pullback towards the uh, uh, $20 um, level or the 200 moving average. So same here, pay attention to US dollar index. If that appreciates, we may see something similar to this, uh, a fall towards the $20 level. Um, yes. So if we look at Kokoa, Kokoa has tried to rally yet again. We broke the 200 moving average, rally up towards the 50 moving average, but this candlestick is not looking very promising. We may stick around here in between the 50 and the 200 moving average for uh, or a few days. But if we don't manage to break the 50 moving average, this could mean that we'll completely turn around. So we are actually in mid-range at this point. Here we have the highs of uh, 2.7 and we have the lows at 2.0. So we are technically in the middle of things here. And if you look way back, we, we were also in this range for quite a long time. You can see here, we ran into resistant, resistant, and also here resistant, and of the lows is around here, which we also found support, support, support. So we have been here before. And we may see something similar to this uh, happening again, where we basically just trade within this channel or we trade within the bigger channel of going up and down and up and down. I think this is going to, uh, I think this is what's going to happen. We are going to trade within this channel here 
similar to what happened uh, back in May and June. However, if we break the 50 moving average, that opens the door to these levels here, 2.597, and then up to this very highest of 2.7. If we break low uh, below uh, uh, the 200 moving average, that opens the door to uh, 2.3, and if that breaks, that opens the door to 2.2, and then all the way to 2.0. Technical indicators are looking very bullish for this market, so we may have a run to the upside or we just stick around here and then trade within this channel. So if you look at Platinum, Platinum did what we basically expected it to do. It rallied to the upside. Probably one of the main reasons is that there is just so much support underneath here that it is almost impossible for Platinum to get through. So we have been sticking to the 200 moving average for several weeks now. We have tried to rally up towards the 50 moving average. Uh, we did break the 50 moving average today. We also closed above the 50 moving average. So this doesn't really mean that we are going to just continue to the upside. It doesn't mean that. We need an additional green candlestick above the 50 moving average and probably two of them in order to, to uh, confirm that we are going to go higher. If we break below the 50 moving average uh, on Monday, that means that we'll most likely stay within this range or test these lows uh, before we go higher from here. However, the technical indicators for Platinum are quite encouraging. Um, the MACD has turned around, the stochastic is looking very uh, bullish, same goes for the CCI is uh, pointed to higher levels, and the, C and the same goes for the RSI. It's only at 56, so that means that there's a lot of room to the upside. We're not even close to be overbought or oversold or anything. So there's a lot of room to the upside. So if this takes off, if we break about the 50, then we'll most likely see that we'll go to uh, 1957 or 1960 and then to these highs of uh, 1000. No interest in basically shorting this. Uh, probably good bet is that you, if you bounce from the 200 moving average again, then we'll go higher. That's probably a good uh, buying opportunity. So we look at sugar. Sugar is now trading a little bit sideways, uh, and this could be an indication that we are about to go lower. We are overextended, we are overbought, uh, the uh, CCI is turning around, the uh, stochastic is turning around, and so is the MACD. We have been on a very nice run here to the upside, but the distance between the 50 moving average and, uh, and uh, the closing price now is quite far and we basically need a pullback towards the 15 moving average in order to uh, yeah well basically buy into sugar uh, no interest of buying at this level this is just ridiculous to buy here uh, and no interest basically shorting this is basically fall back towards the 15 moving average enter a buy and then just continue this rally uh, there's no we are in uptrend that there's no indication that we are going lower in this market. So if you look at wheat, wheat rallied quite nicely today. We did have two days of pullback, but we rallied, but we did not manage to break these highs. We're quite far away from these highs. So this is not an indication that we are going to go higher from here. I do expect us to go a little bit lower before we go high or we start trading sideways until the 50 moving average catches up. We are quite overextended. We have been on a quite nice bullish run here, uh, but technical indicators are showing signs of weakness. Uh, we were overbought, but they are all turning around. MACD, CC, the stochastic, the CCI, and the uh, RSI are at this moment quite flat, and that is a sign that is a sign of weakness and it means that we basically can break down from here. 
there's no, there's just too much risk at buying at these levels. And as we are in the uptrend, it's just not a good idea to short this market at this point. There's no sign that this market is going to collapse or trend at reversal. We will probably have a gradual decline towards the 50 moving average. And we get if we get very close as similar to here, then that is the best buying opportunity that you're going to get. So hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing, hit the bell button and the like button in order to see our newest videos. Uh, good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.